okay. Mordor. You need to see it to believe it, basically. That is Tease Beckers, our guide for today's ecological misery tour of the German Rhineland. And I'm Jesse Friesten, and this is Decouple Studios. I met Tease while touring Europe, filming for our first ever Decouple film, which we hope to release later this year. But I wanted to release a few scenes from the film as we go, starting with this one with Tease, who is an author of four books on energy, as well as the host of the Nuclear Humanist YouTube channel. Tease lives just on the Dutch side of the border, a 30 minute drive from this one of humanity's largest creations, the lignite pits of the German Rhineland. Thies began his energy career as an advocate for renewable energy, wind and solar, but after watching his German neighbors invest world-leading sums in those technologies, yet at the same time needing to continue building new gas-powered plants as well as expanding these massive coal mines just in his backyard, this led Thies to switch his energy allegiance to becoming an advocate for nuclear energy. You ready? Yeah. So right now we are on a tower on the borders between the Netherlands, Belgium and Germany. You look into Germany, probably a hundred windmills. But if you look closely to the east, you can see one, two, three, four smoke plumes. And those are lignite fi fired coal plants and they eclipse all the energy production that is being done by the windmills that you can see right now. So this, this shows us simply in one picture, it, it simply is not possible to replace that amount of power generation with just windmills. Next up, we are going to the Lake Night Pits and I'm going to see if I can make Jesse's jaw drop. Okay. <laughs> Uh, judging from what I saw on Google Earth already, I'm pretty sure my jaw's gonna drop. Really? This weird car. That hill is just ground that has been dug up from these lignite pits. It's staggering. There's a monster eating at the earth. The scale of this thing is just, it's incomprehensible. If I didn't know how tall those excavators were, I wouldn't be able to tell you, but I know that those things are 100 meters tall. From here to the end of this pit, maybe 10 kilometers, and this is not even the biggest. So where we are going now is a, a personal secret spot of mine. Rarely have I ever seen pe people there. It's closed off. And it's probably because they are now moving this way with their production. So we are having to look for a new spot. Yeah, let's throw caution in the wind. Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. Oh, it went under again. <laughs> All right. Most road trips end up in a cultural area, like the city center or something like that. I'm taking Jesse to the coal plants. The coal plants, they are a problem that we need to get rid of. So let's learn about the coal plants instead of the city. We can always come back to the city once we've won the, you know, the war against coal. <laughs> That's all the lignite on that conveyor belt right, right there. That one is two and a half gigawatts. If you look, you can see this brownish, yellowish glow in the air. They burn the dirtiest coal that there is. <laughs> Combustion is for dodos. And the Do dodos are dead. And the dodos are dead. So each one of those windmills is producing two megawatts, and that that's two gigawatts next to it. Yeah, so that's that's zero point one percent. 
So a thousand to one? Yeah. Wie geht's dir? Nee. Hm? Oh, wir, wir, machen, wir, wir, machen, wir machen industrielle Fotografie. Industrielle Fotografie? Ja. Und so, und so. Alles, was industriell ist. Für euch privat oder beruflich? Nee, für uns privat. Nur zum Spaß machen. Ne? Und da gibt es eine Menge hier. Ja, ist schon klar. Aber das ist eine tolle Ausrüstung, die ihr habt. Das hatte ich schon. <lacht> Ja, danke. Wiedersehen. So that's what you have to be careful about around here is that some of these people are really, really fond of these, of these, of these coal fired power plants because thousands of people work there. Clearly, this region benefits greatly from having these plants in their neighborhoods, but at some point we need to get rid of them. At some point, maybe you end up living on top of the lignite. That's also a big part of the of the problem here. So here's a map of the Rhineland coal fields that Tees and I are driving around in. The green here is the old mines that have been filled in. The beige are the three active lignite mines. Now they look small here on the map, but these three little beige areas here are a total of 150 square kilometers. That's roughly the size of the city of Belfast. Also on the map, you've got your four coal-fired power plants. Each one of these is, is, is fed with conveyor belts coming directly from the mine. And then the most common feature that you see on this map actually are these little gray geometrical shapes. And each one of these represents a village that has been eaten by the mine. I count at least 30. This whole trip in the Rhineland reminded me a little too much of some time I spent filming in 2012 in Appalachia in the United States, where hundreds of beautiful mountaintops have been exploded in order to recover the coal inside. I think most people's view on blowing up mountains is they just would rather not know where their electricity is coming from. And much like the conversation I recorded with Tees in the Rhineland, I would regularly be getting asked by people questions like, are you for coal or against coal? And I remember thinking like, this might be one of the most ridiculous questions I've heard. But after a while, I began to realize that what they were really asking me was, are you pro me or anti me? Are you with my family or against us? And it's a really difficult thing to figure out how to talk in a way that can decouple these things, that can say to somebody meaningfully that like, yes, I'm definitely against burning coal, but I'm also definitely for your family. But at the end of the day, it's not just the drone shots or the flyovers giving the kind of breadth of the ecological destruction that hits you. It's also the abandoned villages. Not just because your, your mind starts to imagine what life looked like here before. Maybe those families actually moved somewhere else and are actually living a, a better life today. And I have no idea. But what those villages do represent for me in fossil fuel zones is all those communities that are gonna be impacted by the droughts and the floods and the sea level rise. And a lot of those places are in zones that don't have the resources of a Germany to safely and comfortably relocate the village or the city even. The last thing that I wanna point out on the map here are these little orange shapes. Each one of these represents a village that has had to abandon or is in the process of abandoning right now for the next expansion of the mine, such as the village of Mannheim here, which Tees and I visited. RWE destroys lives. That's what it says. Who's RWE? That's a coal company. It's a ghost town. It literally is a ghost town. Everything is boarded up or windows are broken. And this was all houses. Here used to be houses and there used to be houses. This is so unnecessary. 
It's crazy to think the coal under here is worth more than all this. Yeah. At this point, I thought I'd seen enough kind of excavation for one day, but it turns out we hadn't seen the biggest mine of them all, which is the giant hole that has replaced the ancient Hambach forest. This one features a state-of-the-art lookout with a restaurant and a gift shop, both closed for COVID, but also a playground and a little fitness center. It's kind of like a mini mining Disneyland or a Dignyland. Dignyland? Let's see. This basically is the equivalent of Mordor in real life. The sun is setting and it's quite hazy. There's like monster diggers everywhere, 73 meters high. There's like, I don't know, half a dozen of them at least. The hole is 600 meters deep at least. This is what we as a species can do to this planet. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Given what you see in, the, in your little tri-country district here, it's helped create a worldview for you, no? Yes, we are uncertain what happens after we die. I accept that there may be nothing, but that doesn't mean that I need to be nihilistic about it. I want to make sure that future generations, my children, my children's children, all future kids, that they basically inherit a, a planet that is not only habitable, but also ensures that everybody can live a life of plenty. And that's my worldview. So I hope that we can basically make the right decisions, stop this coal madness, to create this optimistic future for all. Since filming this, Germany's new coalition government has announced its plan to greatly accelerate the phase out of coal from 2038 to 2030. And what they're largely gonna be replacing that coal with in the meantime is the burning of natural gas or methane. And it gives itself until 2040 to phase out methane from electricity production. That's about a decade. But this plan is being criticized for basically being a list of targets without concrete details of how to get there. And if you want to see this kind of lack of concrete details in action, you should check out Chris's interview with Stefan Hoffe, who's the spokesperson for the German delegation to COP26. That's over at the Decouple podcast. And the new coalition government in Germany also followed through on the previous government's plan to prematurely shut down three of the six remaining CO2-free nuclear power plants. And if you want to find out more of the dirty details of that, head over to the podcast and check out Chris's interview with Anna Veronica Wendland from the Grunde power station during the last week ever of its operation. And here at Decouple Studios, I'm going to keep releasing some of the scenes from my European escapades, as well as some new in-studio stuff. If you are down with what we're doing here, if you are down with the mission of trying to get energy to all the humans on Earth, both those currently living and those to be born, while also greatly limiting the ecological impacts of those activities, then maybe share a few clicks with us. I could suggest the like button or the subscribe button. If you do that, definitely also hit that notification bell and maybe even the share button so that we can keep growing this thing.